Hello everyone and welcome back to the Solving the Advent of Code Puzzle Adventures in Kotlin series. And today we are solving Hover Haversacks. As always, we are grateful to Eric Westel for providing great content and lots of joy in solving it. Interesting fact. Statistics shows that only 60% of those who watch this video are subscribed to this channel. So if you want to help to spread the knowledge and also fun and happiness, Please hit the subscribe button and bell. What is handy haversax? Nobody knows. But let's describe our task briefly. We are sitting in the airport. And as usually happens, there are new regulations in it. And this time it is regulations about luggage. These regulations tell us that all bags should be color coded and contain a specific number of color coded bags. And of course, nobody th thought about how much time will it take to process all these rules. Okay, let's see a simple example of such rules. For example, here, light red bags should contain one bright white bag and two muted yellow bags. And bright white bags should contain one shiny gold bag. Shiny gold bags are significant because they're the final target of our task. What is our task? The first part of the puzzle tells us that we should say how many back colors can eventually contain at least one shiny gold back. Okay, indeed it would be hard to find potential containers of our shiny gold back by hand, but programming will help us, right? We will work with tree of backs. Why tree? Because the structure where one thing is contained in other things may be represented as tree. Not like a tree on the street, but a tree as programming structure. And the most straightforward representation of the tree, in our case, will be a map of colors to rules, where the K is a color of the contained bag and the rule is a set of colors of bags which potentially contain our bag. Let's define a couple of type aliases for that. And also we know that the most important bag for us is the shiny gold bag. Let's put this shiny gold thingy into the constant. And now let's define a function that will return our tree of rules. Now it's time to start the first part of the solution, file parsing. Let's look into our file. What we can see here, we can see that all the lines are structured the same way. For example, the name of container, backsword, then it should contain, then some digit representing how many bags should it contain, and then common separated list of bags, which container should contain. How should we handle it? First, we should remove all the words bags or bag, all the dots, and then the word contain from our string. And then we should separate everything to the left from the contain word will be the container's name, uh, color, and everything on the right side of the contain word will be the name of contained bags. And in this part of the puzzle we don't need those digits, so let's remove them too. Let's implement it in a new function, and let's call it, say, buildback tree. We will process each line, and we have a special function for, for it, for each line. On each line we should remove all the things we won't need in this puzzle. We will do it with regular expressions. The regular expression for digit deletion is simple, but the regular expression for removing bag and bags with the next dot is more complex. Let's check if our regular expression works. It matches bag. It matches bags. It matches bag dot. And bags dot. That's cool. Now, when everything is filtered out, we need to split our string by contain word and each resulting string we want to trim. I think that now we have parent and children separated into different parts of the array. Let's test it by printing colors and respective rules. Let's run it, scroll to the top and see the pairs of lines where the first line is the name of color and every other line is the respective rule. Let's put them into separate values with destructuring declaration. Oh, we can see that we have two separate variables. First, 
will get the first element of our array and second, all children, will get the second element of our array. And we can see here that both should be strings. Cool! Now we should convert all children string to separate elements. How do we do it? We are splitting by comma and trimming again. Now for each child. Now let's define a tree inside our function. As you remember, our function sh should return such tree. Ok, what's next? Now, for each child found, we should check if there is already a rule for it. If there is one, we should add one more parent to it. And if not, we should create a new rule. We remember that the rule is just a type alias to the set of strings, right? A special function on maps called compute allows us to compute the next value for any given key. Let's make use of it. Please note, this function is JVM specific, so in other platforms you will probably need to use another solution, for example use if expression. In our case, the key is a color of child. Compute function accepts two arguments, the first argument is a key we are looking for, and the second is a lambda, which accepts two arguments again. First is our key, and the second one is the current value. We can see that type of key is a string. Type of value is nullable set of strings. Now we should define separate logics for the situation when the current value is null and when the current value is not null. When the rule is null, we should create a new rule and return it as a new value. And if the value is null, we should add a new parent to the existing rule. An immutable set represents the rule, so we can use the plus operator, which will create a new set for us. It looks like value and key are not two meaningful names. So let's rename them. And it also looks like the key is not used at all here, because we already know our key. Let's re replace it with a spatial underscore value. Now it won't be underlined as unused. Ok, we have done parsing and that's cool. This function should return something. Let's return our rules. The next part is actual search. Let's discuss how we should do it. Let's use depth first search. What is depth first search? Wikipedia says it is the algorithm for traversing tree or graph data structure. Algorithm starts at the root node and explores as far as possible along each branch. It's like search to the top of the tree. For each iteration, we should define for which backs we should find potential parents now. At the start, we know only a shiny gold back, and we should define potential containers of this back. In the second step, we will find potential backs containers found on the first iteration, etc., etc., until we will finish the search. Okay, so the first step is to define our known backs, and the result of first iteration will be called next. And we definitely know that there are at least some backs in this search. Then iteration starts. If all next backs are already known, that we should break the cycle. Otherwise, we should redefine our already known backs and the next step with new values. The most exciting part here is defining the new step. It will be the potential containers of each back in the current to find set. So for each item in the to find set, we should find its containers and rules. And now we should flatten search results and convert them to set to remove duplicates. It looks like our iterative search is finished. Let's return the result from our search function and now we should output the final result. What is the final result? It's known backs without shiny gold back itself. And we should output its size. Let's run our application. And the result is 274. Let's check it. Yes, it's correct.
And that's cool. And let's move to the second part. We will solve the second part on the same input, but this time we need to count how many bags our shiny gold bag will eventually contain. Do remember numbers like shiny gold bags contain two dark red bags, and dark red bags contain two dark orange bags, and so on. At the end of the day, the shiny gold bag will contain 126 other bags. You should perform the same calculation, but this time we should go down the tree and use digits which we have thrown our last time to count how many bags each bag will contain. And we'll, we'll do it recursively. Let's watch it our input again. Reading the rules gives us new information. Some bags won't contain other bags. And lines with this data look like shiny green bags contain no other bags. It will be the end of the recursion. Now we should build the same tree. But vice versa. The color of the container will be the key and info about children will be the rule. Now let's implement parsing logic. We are reading each line. For each line, we are removing everything back related. And again, we are splitting by the contain word. And again, we have to trim each part. And again, we assign our variables with destructuring. Now, let's compute our rule for the current parent. If there is a phrase no other in all children variable rule will be empty. Otherwise, it will contain children split by comma, trimmed and converted into a set. Let's define our resulting rules map. And finally, we should return our rules. Now we need to count children inside shiny gold bag. We will perform it with the help of breadth-first search. According to Wikipedia, breadth-first search is an alg algorithm for searching a tree that structures for an that satisfies a given property. It starts at the tree root and explores all nodes at the present depth, prior to moving on to the nodes at the next depth level. Let's create a function for it. I want it to be an extension function for our map for the sake of readability. As a parameter, it will accept the color of the back children of which we are counting. Do you still remember that we kept the number of every child in the back? Now let's create a regular expression, which we will use to find digits in each child. What should we do on each level of iteration? We should extract all children from current back. If there are no other backs in it, we are just returning zero. Now we are declaring the counter and starting to count backs inside each child. First, we should extract the count of this child in the parent back to the variable count. Second, we should replace this count with nothing in the child's name and trim the resulting name. Now it's time for the boring math. We should add to the total count and count multiplied by the number of bags inside each bag. On each level of recursion, we should just return the total after the loop. Now let's output result and check it. Looks correct. Thank you very much for your patience. And let's reiterate what we have learned today. We learned how to use regular expressions. We found the JVM specific compute method which allows us to dynamically compute the value in any map based on current value. We have used for each line method. And we have built two types of search algorithms, depth-first search and breadth-first search. And I hope that we enjoyed the process of learning and solving. And that's all I have for you today. See you, see you soon in other episodes.